Hi, I'm Harry from Mode Lighting and in this video we're going to cover the basic steps required for installing a Tiger lighting control system. The panel has a three phase supply, phase one, two, three, a neutral connection and an earth connection. On a single phase supply, that can be one in and then looped out to the other two or three separate cables going back to the distribution board. Your mains outgoing connections are fed from here and you have common neutral bars for all outputs. The panel is split up into power cards in the center, the power supply on the left hand side and the main processor board on the right hand side. The breakers are split into three phases. The feed comes in from the bottom, out through the top and into the dimming cards. The breaker also feeds some emergency terminals, two per phase of the panel to power emergency fixtures. On the processor board, you have connections for DMX, keypads, alarm terminals, and then also for zero to 10 terminals. For initial power up, make sure that your bus connections are in the zero volt, five volt, and DT, and are wired to the same at the keypad end. At this point, you should set if your circuits are dimmable or non-dimmable. This is done with the jumper links at the bottom of the dimming cards. When the jumper link is in the back position, this is how they're set out of factory, the circuit will dim. To change this over, grab hold of the jumper with a pair of pliers and move it to the front position. This will change the circuit to be switched. And make sure to do this while the pack is powered down. To put the panel into a test override mode, you can turn on the test switch on each of the dimming cards. In the down position, that is test full power out. With this switch down, the keypad will no longer function and the lights will be stuck on. If your panel has three channel analog cards, we have three red LED indicators, three jump links for the alarm mode, and three jumper links for switched or dim mode. On the trailing edge digital cards, the top three dip switches are for setting alarm mode. Four and five have no operation. Dip switch six sets override for channel one. Dip seven for override on channel two. And dip switch eight for override on channel three. And at this point, you would be ready to power up your panel. Check that your three neons are illuminated on your power supply. And the display should be on 001 if it's your first pack. Make sure that your red LEDs on your dimming cards are all on. And that your outgoing circuits are powered up. Once these initial checks are out the way, you can power back down. The dip switches should come preset from the factory. However, if you do need to make any adjustments, the first dip switch will allow you to move from 18 to 12 channel or two to three card mode. The next dip switch down is for analog or digital and digital is if you're using it with a keypad. The next dip switch down is for setting the panel into 10 volt or six volt mode. These days you will always leave this in 10 volt mode. The dip switch after that is for going between RS-232 or DMX input. And the one after that is for setting DMX end of line. And the next dip switch down is to halve the size of a pack. So you can go to six channel or nine channel mode. The seventh dip switch is for doing a total override of the mains channels and also for the uh, analog outputs. And the final dip switch is for locking the address. 
with all of that done, it's time to be able to take the cards out of test mode and then we can power the system back up for normal operation. Once the system is powered back up again, just check your address. You may need to change this if this is the second or the third pack. There must always be a panel that's on 001. And at this point from the keypad, you should see the system responding correctly. We would then recommend pressing number four, which is 30% power output and wandering around the site and seeing if all the lamps are dimmable as expected. If everything is going on and off, dimming down correctly from the keypad, you're ready for programming. Okay, so we've covered what's needed to know for installing the lighting panel. If you found this information useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop us a comment or get in contact with us. The details are in the description below.